ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the new speed presented to you by Ladies Like and Survivor. Follow, follow the beat, follow the beat from the studio to the street. Info with the flow, keep you shepherd in the know. Sit back, relax, enjoy the news, follow. African wildlife is in danger due to notorious animal poachers, prompting African wildlife bodies to come up with stringent measures. The East African region accounts for 80% of the African ivory seizures, and poaching continues to rob the continent of its great treasures. The report by the International Institute of Environment and Development revealed the impact of poaching in Uganda in its assessment. It noted that although wildlife crime within the country was declining, Uganda is still used by other countries as transit for animal trafficking. The report was launched by Dr. Andrew Seguia, the Director of Wildlife Authority, who advocated for stringent punishments for wildlife and crimes as a necessity. The Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities was also asked to push harder for the amendment of the Uganda Wildlife Act. The lost wildlife should be tantamount to the administered fines of jail town, not less than 20 years for wildlife crimes. Women and wildlife operations are to be surrounded and grounded. The trucks and warehouses used are to be impounded. The report says poor people are not the major beneficiaries, but are most likely to receive penalties by the law enforcement agencies. Bushmeat hunters are more likely to be apprehended by law officers than the highly connected and well-facilitated wildlife poachers. The illegal trade is fueled by corruption among local officials, which has left Uganda with a small population of only 15 white rhinos. Although Uganda is the only country in the region that has increased its elephant population, its achievement could be undermined by international smugglers who have taken advantage of the local corruption. 70 years ago, when Greece was attacked by Nazi Germany, 300 Greeks were killed in this atrocity. Villages and towns were burnt, and money taken that was not returned. But history seems to have no memory, and Europeans were treating Greece like they were no longer part of the European family. European banks gave Greece giant loans so that they could pay off private banks the money that they owned. But now, the debt is even bigger, and Greece treated like a beggar. Banks in Greece are now shut, and no more money can be taken out. Suicide rates have gone 30% up, and every day, 1,000 businesses are going bust. But Europe was quick to forget. 70 years ago, Germans were in debt, just like African countries are made slaves to their debt. Greece, too, is now a victim of banks and the IMF. And if Europeans don't stand up in solidarity, they might have to face again a lesson of history. Organ trafficking is on the rise around the world as transplant surgery is sore for each organ sold. The chances of getting a legitimate organ are getting minimal, compelling many patients to turn to organ selling criminals. Poor desperate donors who want to part with an organ for a fee can also negotiate with organ traffickers officially. But most of them are cheated or not paid a single cent. One can also order for an organ on the internet. Victims can be kidnapped or forced to give up their organs. The most targeted are migrants, poor children and orphans. Some victims have their organs taken without their knowledge by unethical doctors who prey on the disadvantaged. Resolutions have been passed by the European Union and the United States Congress condemning China's practice of forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience. Some of the organs are believed to come from the members of the Falun Gong movement, a religious group banned by the Chinese government. 10,000 organs are transplanted annually in China's hospitals and clinics, and it has become a destination for rich clients wanting to avoid waiting lists. China's organ trade is estimated to rake in $1 billion annually, from organs obtained mostly from death row prisoners in state penitentiaries. But laws are being instated preventing organs from the Chinese, and are already in place in Spain and Israel and other Western countries. The nature of the illegal trade has made it one of the most gruesome crimes and one of the most inhumane practices of our times. African innovation has long been the cornerstone of the development of the African youth. Our reporter M. Tsiloy is here with more. The Nigerian brothers have taken the internet by storm. Although they are only 13 and 15 years old, they developed an application now used around the world. It's called Crocodile Browser Lite and has already been downloaded 10,000 times. It makes surfing on the internet much faster. Even against Google's Chrome browser, the two brothers are called Osine and Anesi. And since the age of seven, they have been passionate about technology. Their mother even says that Osine could use a computer since the age of three. They work very well together. Osine writes the code and Anesi is the designer. They are both self-taught through books and online courses. They made it to the global stage. Yesterday, reading and writing were the focus of education. But today, computer literacy is what makes the strength of a nation. I'm MC Loy, reporting for Newsbeat. Thank you, MC Loy, for that report. That was the news of the beat. Next week will be another hit. Still, let it slide. And Survivor. Reporting live and direct with love and respect. 
follow the beat 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 follow the beat